Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in today's video I will be working on a coffee table or a side table. It is made of solid oak and the top is some sort of laminate with press board but I have a really cool idea for that so we will see that later on in the video. It is super nice to be back. I haven't posted in a while. Work has got me super busy so it's really good to be back and doing some work on the side and posting some videos for everybody to see. So when I first came across this piece, I knew that I wanted to restore it, but the only problem that I had, and I couldn't understand why, but it had a pressed board, laminate type of top. It was really heavy, and I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do, but I knew that I wanted to do something special for the top. So I'm going to be removing this top and I'm going to be reusing it later on and you'll see how. So I'm using my small carbide scraper just to scrape off the top layer of the finish. It is pretty dried out and fairly easy to come off. I just wanted to remove that top layer before I go in with my sander just to make it a little bit easier and a little bit faster. So because this is solid oak and the wood is very dense, I'm using 150 grit sandpaper so that way I don't close all of the wood grain so that way I can get a really nice color out of it later on. So for these little decorative pieces on the bottom of the legs, I'm using my sand blaster and I do get a lot of questions about this sand blaster. It is a very simple setup. It is just a sand blaster gun that I got from Amazon and I got the media blast from Harbor Freight. I put it in a bucket and it is hose fed and you just hook it up to your air compressor and you're good to go. And I really, really love the results of this. It doesn't damage the wood at all and it gets all of that finish out of there so I don't have to sit there and tediously sand it out by hand. I was a little inspired by one of my older videos when I did a chevron pattern for the drawer fronts so I decided that I wanted to do something cool with the top so I found these uh, tongue and groove I want to say they are decking boards or maybe siding boards and I'm leaning more towards siding boards because they don't seem as sturdy for decking but I got these two alternate colors of a pine and some sort of dyed gray color not sure if that's a natural color but I thought that the contrast between the two would look really really cool Off camera I decided to cut the top down to fit on the inside of that oak border that was underneath the top originally because I want to flush screw it down to the inside of that base so that I can replace it with my new chevron pattern top. To achieve a chevron pattern is very simple. You just cut all of your boards to a 45 degree angle and I just kind of eyeball the length to give myself a little bit of overhang so that way I can trim it up later.
Because I cut the material in half on a table saw, I wasn't confident with the thickness of the boards. They were just a little off, so I decided to pull out the planer and just get them all to a nice uniform size so that way I'm not sanding for hours later on when I attach these. So I did most of this off camera, but if you can tell, there is some pencil markings down the center of this board and there is a cross section as well. So that way I can get the dead center of this piece. So that way your chevron pattern is going to be nice and straight and your pattern's not going to like veer off to the left or the right because this is the most important part are these two first pieces. They are going to set the tone for the rest of your pattern. So really make sure to take your time and get those ones right. I'd like to take a quick minute to thank everybody who watches all of my videos, leaves me very cool comments in the comment section. I really love interacting with all of my subscribers and viewers, especially answering questions that I know are going to help other people with their projects. It's one of my favorite parts and to show your support to the channel, if you can please subscribe, like, leave some comments. It really does help the algorithm to get my videos out there more. Projects like this are more of passion projects that I really find um, fun and I don't really make any money off of these pieces. These are just purely content for everybody to enjoy. So just liking and commenting really, really helps the channel. Using a straight edge is a great way to get a perfectly straight line so that way I can cut all of the excess wood off with my jigsaw and I'm getting as close to the edge as possible without marking up and scoring the border underneath so that way I can come back and just use my sander to really clean that edge up and get it nice and flush. To clean up all the small little gaps, I'm using a natural colored wood filler and it is okay to use it up against the gray because once I go through and sand it all, you won't be able to see it. And I do have some touch up pens that you're going to see me use a little bit later just to really dial in the top. Now I wasn't sure if I was going to be staining this a darker color or if I was going to leave it natural. So typically in a situation like that where I decide to keep it natural, I like to use a wood stained conditioner just to give the wood some richness and once it dries, it is in a natural color but not as if I was just to put a finish right over top of it. I'm really liking the color of the wood, the way it contrasts off each other and that wood stain conditioner just really, really richens the color of the natural wood. And this is where I was using those touch up pens just to color in that wood filler to really match. Now in this clip right here, it does look like it's off, but once it dries, it really matches well. Now that most of the finish work is done, I just have to attach the base back to the top and I'm just pre-drilling some holes so that way it makes it a lot easier for me to line it up and get my screw set.
The last thing there is to do is to top coat this and I did decide to use polyurethane in a satin finish. It's one of my favorite finishes for um, durability and I do about three to four coats of that with sanding of 400 grit sandpaper in between each coat. For this I didn't show everything because it's pretty much all the same but just lay all your coats on evenly and you should be good to go. Once the top coat has had some time to dry, it is now time for me to reveal this piece and see how it turned out. I really hope everybody enjoyed the process of this project and the way that it turned out. Me personally, I love the natural color of the wood against the contrast of that chevron pattern. Please let me know in the comment section below if there is anything that you would have done different or if you would have went with a different color or a different pattern. Like I said, these are passion projects, so please like comment and subscribe so that way i can take this channel to another level and bring you guys more content like this thank you very much and i cannot wait to see you on my next project